Uh, it's the chance to get in, and you still get points for what your finish is. So, uh, very interesting to see how this will work out. We've got some some good talent back in the field. Jason Barney starting seventh. Steve Poirier is starting in position number twelve. Uh, Danny Barron starting in fifth. Uh, there's a lot of good talent in this race, and we'll have to see how it all shapes up. Don't worry, you didn't miss it. That wasn't the actual four wide yet. They're getting themselves all set up. But you guys know what to do, especially with all of you who are longtime sprint race fans. In a tradition originally started by the World of Outlaws, they will go four wide. And what this is for, outside of the fact that obviously it looks and sounds pretty cool, it's their salute to you, the fans, and their way of saying thank you for coming out here tonight at Can-Am. So you know how you say you're welcome? You stand on your feet, you give them a wave, and give them a nice send-off as they get ready to go here in the 25 lap A main. So I want to see it from you guys down in turn number four. It's up to you to set the example here for everybody else in the rest of the grandstand. We've got a nice crowd here tonight. This isn't church. This isn't school. You don't have to worry about being quiet. You can make some noise and have some fun. As America's race cars, the Empire Super Spritz go four wide out of turn four. Okay, you guys over there, let's see. I want to hear it. I don't want to hear my voice at all, guys. See the cell phones. Take a video. Come on, make some noise. Make me proud. All right, you guys left the right of the start finish line. It's your turn now. Come on, make some noise. Wave your hat. Wave your arm. Wave the person next to you if they don't mind. Full ride for the Empire Super Spritz. Now they'll go ahead and form up in probably about two, three laps from now. We'll be getting our initial green flag. to see the turnaround here that has happened at this track. What a difference. Uh, hats off to Tyler Bartlett and all of his crew here at the Speedway. Lots of good things happening here. The future is bright at k and I'm happy, so happy to be a very small part of this here tonight. They're pointing to turn number three. See the white chalk line that was just put down in turn number four. That is where the start of the race happens. They can't get onto it before that. They must be side by side at that line when they come. And we will see who is going to get the big win here tonight. Mike Kaiser, Pauli Colagiovanni, green flag is out. That's a good start. Here we go. Down into the corner they go. Some shuffling at mid-pack as they sort themselves out, but it's Pauli Colagiovanni out in front in the 10. The teenager from Marcellus, race shops in Central Square. Him and his dad work together all the time. They are out in front, and they lead lap number one. Mike Kaiser in second, Matt Tanner in third, watching the battle for position number four. One car went way to the outside. That is Danny Barron. I think we may have a car off the track in turn number two. Caution flag is out here on lap number two. And again, we believe there's a car off the track over in the turn one and two area. I could just see the top of the wing right in the right about there. See where the leaders just passed? Watch the uh, ATV with the yellow lights. You'll see where the car is. I can't tell who that is. Is that Jason Barney? Oh no, Jason Barney, defending serious champion, serious champion, excuse me, gets around over in the middle of one and two. And we'll see if he just needs a push. Hopefully no damage on his car. Barney started the race on the inside of row number four in position number seven. So obviously he was trying to either get up to the top or something. I, I was busy watching Danny Barron uh, as he was battling with Paul Kinney for position number four. Which, from watching the everything we've seen so far tonight, I would guess that's the default lane at this point. Is start up top. Unless you've been pulling off the bottom all night. Yeah, that is a slow pace being set by Paul E. Cole Giovanni. If I'm not mistaken, he's going to be a junior this year in high school over at Marcellus High School. What were you doing, Jeff, when you were a junior? We don't want to know, do we? Okay, that's another question for another day. Oh, a little ragged on the start that time. Cole Giovanni out to the new lead, Matt Tanner. Now shown in second, Danny Barron in third. Mike Kaiser is going to try the outside of him, try to get to the number four spot. A lot of shuffling going on towards the back of the pack. Here come the leaders off of turn number four. Cole Giovanni still out in front with Matt Tanner chasing. Barron, Kaiser, good battle for fifth between Jeff Cook and Coleman Gulick. Gulick just took it. Cook comes right back to the bottom, trying to retake it back-to-back -back slide jobs for fifth place as they work down the back straightaway. 
three laps complete. Colin Giovanni still out in front. Front four cars separating themselves just a little bit now from the rest of the field. Fifth place now, Kulik. He has pulled away a little bit from Jeff Cook. Vigneault may have uh, tapped that U tire on the inside of turn number two. He lost a little bit of ground there. He is still in the top ten. So Colo Giovanni out front, Tanner second, Danny Lehren, Mike Kaiser, and Coleman Gulick. Couple cars off the track in turn number four. They get back down on the racetrack. Jeff Tromley was one of those. The other was Keith Granholm. Granholm is now at the tail end of the lead lap with the leaders coming here very, very quickly. So the, the guy who got started late in life in this deal is needs a yellow, and there it is. We have a car sitting sideways in the middle of turns three and four. Second caution flag of the event. Good break for Keith Granholm in the 13 as the leader was just on him and was going to lap him within, a, within probably one more completion of this racetrack. Who is that over there? Do we know? Brett Wright? Vigneault. Oh, it's uh, Vigneault. It's Alex Vigneault. 10C. Who ended up going around in turns three and four. So the big thing you want to avoid in a situation like this, it's not so much the 5th, the 6th, the ninth, the 11th place finishes, it's the 24th place finishes, 25th place finishes that do it. So Jason Barney almost halfway back up through the field already. Yeah, we're good. 16th Jason Barney being shown right now. Green this time. They're saying they're going green. Don't worry about it. Everybody's two by two in the rows, so we are in good shape here. Paulie Cole Giovanni has led all four laps to this point. We'll see what he has. And hey, he, he likes the slow restarts. That is going to be a redo right there. Oh no, Matt Tanner! Oh wow, no! And a bad crash in turn number one. That start was coming back. We've got multiple cars upside down. Cola Giovanni got into him and Tanner. There was contact between the two of them. Tanner didn't go over, but then there was some pretty serious contact down in one and two. We've got a whole bunch of cars out there right now. I don't know how the 90 of Tanner did not flip on that deal during the week. Let's see what we can see on Cola Giovanni's car. See some radius rods looking like pretzels. See how they hooked it by the rub rails on the side. Go ahead. Hopefully not uh, as bad as we originally had thought. Mike Kaiser getting the, Are they leaving the premises? tow premises here, or the tow work right here. He is right here in the 99. The cradle job. Would you rather be the tow truck in front or the guy behind? Hmm. I think I'd rather be the guy in front. I think I'd rather be Ray's here. All right, come on, guys. Let's hear it for him as he comes by. Mike can hear you now. Let's give him a nice round of applause. Make him try to feel a little better here. You cannot pass or pull out of line until you get to the cone. They've got a chain on it so they can pull it out of the way. And if you've watched enough sprint car racing, you've seen every now and then somebody will pick that cone up with their race car and get it under their front bumper or underneath the car or something like that. And if they do, they have to go to the rear. Just that simple. It's not a spot. It's not a row. It's all the way to the back. So we'll see if they are where they're supposed to be. they got a little sorting out to do still. And then once they get that, we'll be back to racing here. at good file. After you go past the cone, you can do what you want. Every race announcer needs a good growl. Here we go. They come off at turn number four. Stare at the cone. That's what the race officials are doing right now. Danny Varon goes back to the top side of the racetrack. He leads them as they head into turn number three. Tough start for the two of Axon. He has fallen to the rear as we watch the battle for second. Oh, it's slipping up just a little bit there. Was Matt, or excuse me, Paul Kinney's number 19 as he wiggled a little bit as they came off of corner number four. 
Watching the battle for fifth as we watch it. Denny Peebles just lost a spot as they came out of turn number two. So Peebles is now back to position number six as your leader heads down to turn number one. So that means move the number 22 of Billy New into, excuse me, Jonathan Preston in the fifth. You know what's interesting? Look at the fifth place car when he comes by. Look at the top wing on the right side. I don't know how he's driving that thing because that, that has got to be doing something different than what they normally do out there. And he is hustling that thing around in fifth place. Wing damage on the right rear of Jan Bilodeau's car. Your leader getting into some traffic now. Putting Dave Axton down a lap. And doing so with uh, a lot of speed, as a matter of fact. I think Axton might be heading to the pit area as he has slowed in the number two. We are completing lap number nine, and Danny Laird working to the inside of another slower car as he will get Keith Granholm this time in one and two. Cook still in second, Kenny in third, Billy Van Imogen in fourth, and again, totally impressed with, with Jonathan Preston, who sits back there in fifth with a damaged wing. Jason Barney. Remember, he brought out the first caution of the race. Well, he is now up to sixth place. Jason Barney turning this night around. He just got by Denny Peebles. And Mike Mahaney started at the back of the pack, two of the buy-in. He is now being shown in position number eight. So Mahaney making the most of his opportunity here today. Race leader works down the back stretch. Pete Richardson, Paul Pekonen, they have all been put down a lap. So Danny Barron has three lapped cars between himself and second place, Jeff Cook. Cook, who has a business that's not too far away from here, would love to get himself a podium finish here tonight. Paul Kinney right on him as they battle for second and third. Cook had a really nice run out of the corner that time, ran it up the track, and has put a little distance between himself and Kinney. Billy Van Imogen was gaining on Kenny for position number three and actually may have picked up a little ground with a nice move through the middle over here in turn number four. So Billy V, remember, he came from the B main. Jason Barney now shown in the top five. He's gone around Jonathan Preston's number 22. Mike Mahaney may have caught something on the inside of the racetrack and he gets around Denny Peebles. So he is now in position number seven. A lot of racing going on through the pack, just not out front at this point as Danny Barron continues to lead. Barron in front, Cook in second, but not for long. Here goes Paul Kinney around the outside. So Paul Kinney grabs the second spot with a nice move out of turn two. Billy Van Inwigin in fourth. All the way from the back of the pack after the yellow. That's the 87 of Jason Barney. He's now in fifth. Mike Mahaney in sixth. Preston's starting to fade a little bit now. He's back to seventh as that damaged swing can't be helping the way that his car is handling. Behind him and behind Preston in eighth place. That is Denny Peebles in eighth place. And then ninth now is Kelly Hebing. And she is making her way towards the front. Actually, Hebing just grabs seventh. And here comes Denny Peebles back at her to try to retake the position. Coleman Kulik, 14, rounds out the top 10. Where's our leader? He is right here on the front stretch, putting lapped cars down in wholesale fashion. Just went around the Vigneault, number 55. So Danny Varon out front and cooking with alcohol right now. Paul Kinney's alone in second. Billy Van Inwigen just grabbed third that time away from the 10 of Jeff Cook. So Van Inwigen now shown in a podium position in third. And remember, he had some work to do. Van Inwigen started in 13th place. Won the dash and obviously learned something. We talked to you about that earlier, how drivers who run the dash can often pick up information that can help them in the future. It'll be interesting to see if that's what happened or not. Jeff Tromley has watched the leader go by. He is now off the pace. The leader's in turn one. Paul Kinney's about half a straightaway behind at this point. Then you've got Billy Van Imogen. And Jeff Cook is not letting him get away. Jeff Cook would love to get in there and do something about it. And again, impressed with Jason Barney. We wondered how many spots he would be able to grab coming from the back. And Jason Barney's 87 now shown in position number five. Three lap cars between Danny Varon and second place Paul Kinney. Van Emerson in third still, but Jeff Cook right there. I would take with one bobble 
to change that position. Coleman Gulick has grabbed a spot. He is now sixth. Just worked his way around Mike Mahaney. So Gulick coming from the back after a flat tire is now being shown in the top six. And gaining quickly, by the way, on Jason Barney. He's going to try him down here. Slide job in turn two. Barney comes back, tries to get him, and the yellow flag is out. We've got a car stopped out of turn number four. Car stopped on the track out of turn four. With just three laps to go. Wants to see. Exactly what lane. And now he figures it out. Man, he's definitely taking the bottom here. Well, he can still change his mind. They're kind of running in the middle right now. We're just discussing the lineup towards the back of the pack and making sure that everything is okay there. They are doubled up. I believe the white may be coming this time. 41 got left first, then the 29. Here's Varian will stay low. Paul Kenny second. Billy Van Imogen third. Jeff Cook fourth. Jason Barney fifth. Coleman Gulick sixth. Mike Mahaney up to 7th. Had to use a buy-in to get into the show. So, nice turnaround for Mahaney tonight. Outside of him, damaged wing at all, Jonathan Preston in 8th. That's just impressive right there. Kelly Hebing ninth, And Steve Poirier, who we didn't think was going to be able to make it back after the crash. Takes air off the wing, takes the downforce down to go to the corner, it won't turn. So you really can't drive in another car's wake. You have to pull side, inside, outside, because if you do, you're not going to make the corner. Slow restart set by Danny Barron. He's the control car. Green flag is out. Barron in front. Van Inwigen trying the inside of Paul Kinney. Can't get him for third. Coleman Gulick on the outside. Picks up position four. Grab two spots on that restart. So Gulick, Coleman Gulick doing a nice job. Here's the race for second. Kinney goes right back to ticket. Van Inwigen went to the outside. Watching that race for second, it's a good one. Kinney gets a good run off the corner that time, so he will keep second spot. Doesn't look like they have anything tonight for Danny Varen. Two laps left to go. Varen in front, one car slowing on the back stretch is the 29 of Herrick. He will pull out of harm's way, or will he? Right flag out, one more lap to go for Danny Varen. Dominating performance here tonight by Danny Varen. If he can get around the back stretch and into three and four one more time, he will make it two in a row here at Can Am. Varen coming out of turn number four. That is two in a row here for Danny Varen. He wins the ESSA main. Paul Kitty in second. Billy Van Imogen in third. Coleman Gulick fourth. Jeff Cook fifth. Jason Barney sixth. Mike Mahaney, 7th, Matt Tanner, 8th, Steve Poirier, 9th, and Jonathan Preston, broken wing and all, rounds out the top 10. Only two more to go. I know, <laughs> I know. It's good, we're having fun. On our way down to victory lane, top three finishers are here. And before you guys head out, I want you to make noise for me one more time as you're on your way out the door. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for our ESSA main winner, Danny Varen. <laughs> Beating up that wing, having himself some fun here at the racetrack tonight is Danny Varen. That is now two in a row. I believe that's number four on the season as car owner. Dover Dave makes his way down into Victory Lane. We'll let Dave offer his congratulations. Hey, man, I don't know if I've ever interviewed you in Victory Lane, man. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you. Uh, that car was absolutely phenomenal. You know, uh, uh, even on lap four there, uh, when we caught lap traffic, um, you know, I just felt so good. I was just uh, taking
quick and easy trying to save it to the end. Tell me about what did you see? What what did you see in front of you on that whole deal down there with the red? Uh, just lane swapping. Um, you know, uh, you know, they're both great drivers. You know, and, and they're going for the win. Um, you know, it's just uh, unfortunate. Um, but uh, you know, uh, we just had to make it to the end. You know, that was my focus, and uh, you know, and uh, this this team Dover break gave me one heck of a car. Where were you? I mean, how did you miss it? Well, I was uh, I was going to pull a slide job anyway, going into one. So, oh, so you were low. Yeah, I was okay. low, and the throttle was down, and uh, we were going to make it happen right then and there anyway. But uh, um, you know, just a huge thank you to uh, uh, all the people that helped me out with this uh, team here, and. Uh, just uh, can't thank them enough. So here you are. You're out front, lapping cars. Everything looks good. The oh, yellow flag. We got to do it one more time. Were you concerned, or did you think I got the car? They're not kidding me. Uh, uh, lap traffic was really throwing me a curveball there. The air was just throwing me all around. Uh, I get behind somebody and I push, and then uh, get behind somebody else and I you know throw the car loose. So um, most time I really like lap traffic, but uh, it was it was tough tonight. It was just throwing the car right around. So uh, uh, when the caution came out, I just pulled the wing back and uh, said we're gonna go. Uh, wide open around here. We talked about Dover Dave. He just came down. Who else would you like to say thanks to? Uh, Pete Northrup, my, my crew chief here. Uh, ben and Lance back at the shop. They're not here tonight, but uh, Dave Krushink, Dover Break, uh, Smolin Trucking, uh, Trackside Body Works, Cobus Co Collision, um, The Shock Doctor, Mags R Us. Uh, there's a bunch of people here that uh, do a little bit, and, and in the end, uh, we have a full car. Nice job tonight. Thank you. Daddy Barry, ladies and gentlemen, one more time for him. Tonight's Empire Super Sprints, a main winner. Oh, that's right.